Hi everyone, it's Jane from Lavender Learning here and this presentation is about effective revision strategies. This is the perfect time to get your head around some ways to revise what you're learning because here in Australia we are just starting a new school term and if you can get on top of this now you'll see the results in 10 weeks or so. Let's have a look. So what's the goal of effective revision? Well firstly we're looking for long-term retention of the information that we're learning. That is, information that's retained from the time that you remembered, from the time that you learn it, until the time that you need that information, whether that be for an assessment piece that's coming up at the end of the term, or whether you might need it in the following year as a foundational understanding to build upon for a new topic, or whether you might need it in the long term for your life, in your career, or in your home life, and um, for example, budgeting and money, those kind of topics will be relevant for the rest of your life. So the goal is to get those topics and that knowledge to be retained for the long haul. Secondly, the goal of effective revision is to have success in assessment when you come to complete that assessment. Now, we know that the overall goal of learning something isn't just to do well in one exam. It is to have that long-term retention that I spoke about a moment ago. But having a good grade that demonstrates or evidences the, the level of work you've put in is always a nice reward. And in many cases, the marks that you get on assessment will open the door for you to future study or further career choices. And so it is important that the, um, the marks that we get in assessment do reflect the best of our abilities. And thirdly, if you can get this under control nice and early, you'll feel more confident and therefore less stressed as you head towards assessment. This little visual is a way of describing the way that we learn topics in a subject. We'll often have several topics that we learn across a whole term. And so I've represented those here in different colored arrows with each color representing a new topic. Sometimes we might only spend a week on a topic. Sometimes it might be a deeper topic that we spend a couple of weeks on. Here and there, we may have a week where we're not learning new content because our focus is on something else like a school musical or a school camp or something like that. But then at the end of the term, we get assessed on everything we've learned across the course of that whole term, even the topics that we learned potentially eight to 10 weeks prior. Sometimes the topics will build upon one another. So you'll learn something and then you'll expand upon it in a new topic and then you might be using some of the information from the first topic to help you with the second topic. And other times they're completely discrete topics, totally separate, jumping from one thing to another. For example, in maths, you might jump from financial understanding and money to measurement and shapes or to time or to algebra, for example. Now, those topics may link in certain ways, but they don't build upon each other. If you're lucky, you might just get some revision before you get to the assessment. Many teachers will produce those checklists that you work through where you're ticking off topics as you revise them in that week or two before the assessment happens. You might also get some small formative assessment um, at the end of each topic where you do a little check-in to see how you're going. But in many cases, those little formative quizzes and things don't uh, actually contribute to your summative grade for the course you'll get that mark from the big assessment that you take at the end. So if you're lucky, you might, um, you might get to revise everything in that last week. But that's not going to be good enough if you've forgotten what it is that you learnt at the beginning of the term. So you need to create your own revision. And this is really the point of this presentation. Here's the strategy that I have used and I found it to be very effective. In the first week, you're going to study the topic that's new that week. So on the diagram in front of you or on the flow chart, we have that as a green arrow. You're going to complete the set work for that week as you would normally, but then you're also going to take some questions from that set work and create your own revision questions based on that topic from week one. Then in week two, you're going to do the set work again. And this time the topic's represented as a purple arrow. Once you've completed the set work, you're going to draw some questions out of that topic and create some revision questions on the purple topic. And then you're going to go back and complete a revision question or two about the topic that you learnt the week prior, the green arrow. 
Similarly, in week three, where I've represented it with a brown arrow, you're going to do the set work and then you're going to create some revision questions based on that set work for the following weeks. And then you're going to go back and do the revision questions that you've got from weeks one and week week two. And you're going to put them together to create um, a bit more revision for yourself there in that week three as well. So then week four, for example, you'd move on to creating some week four revision questions and then you'd go back and do the questions that you've left for week four that you've created from weeks one, two and three and so on. So each week you're adding in new content to your revision as you learn new things and you're producing your own constant revision of the topics that you've covered that term. How many questions should you put into your revision? Well, it really comes down to how well you got the topic or understood it when you were first taught it in that first week that you did that topic. So for example, with topic one, I'm asking the question here on the diagram, did I get it? Well, if the answer is yes, and we'll jump to that first at the bottom of the diagram here, if you got it the first time, then really your revision is, um, the purpose of your revision is to keep that topic nice and clear in your mind and to not lose the understanding that you already have. In that case, I'd have one or two questions per week and then I'd create a little revision test for the end of the term and pop in five questions on the topic and one word problem using that topic. More difficultly though, is um, if you didn't understand the topic in the first place, and so that's where we go to the no section on this diagram. If you didn't get it when you first learnt it at school, it's not suddenly going to come to you before the exam. You're going to have to put in some work to understand the topic and to keep working on it throughout the rest of the term, even if your teacher's moved on to other topics. So at least two questions per week from there on should be about this difficult topic. And then the first week that you're revising the topic, I would do 10 questions. I would carry over 10 questions from week one into week two and give them another go and see if you can get them. If you do the first two out of those 10, and you get them correct, then carry the other eight over to week three and keep building up that extra revision until you feel really confident that you do understand the topic. If in week two, you start those 10 revision questions that you made about week one, and you find that you didn't get the first two questions correct, then you need to continue and really do all 10 of them and try and get your head around it as quickly as possible so that the future weeks are a revision of a topic that you do understand and not further stress trying to understand a new um, topic one while you're learning new topics each week as well. Be honest with yourself if you are struggling with a topic. Don't pretend that it'll come to you when you get closer to the exam. I understand that when something is unpleasant or difficult or challenging, we often want to escape it as quickly as possible. And so there's nothing nicer than not understanding a topic, closing a book and thinking, well, I don't have to think about that again for another eight weeks. But the thing is, the reality is that it will still be on the exam and you're still going to have that horrible feeling when you open that book in week uh, week nine to do your revision um, and you don't understand the topic. Only at that point, you might have several topics that you don't understand very well and it can feel very overwhelming. So get on top of that um, that topic and that understanding nice and early in the term. Be honest. When you're creating those questions, oh, hang on, I should just go back here and say, In the revision test that you're going to create for yourself, um, make sure you put in 10 revision questions on anything you feel tricky plus two word problems. So back to this slide now, creating variety. When you're doing those questions that you're carrying over from your weekly practice from that set by your teacher, do carry over a range of different types of problems. Make sure you carry some simple ones, some complex ones that have a few different steps in them and some word problems so that you're practicing the different types of questions that you are likely to find on your assessment. And as I said before, if you're struggling with a topic, don't let it go. Make sure you ask your teacher. If they haven't got time or they can't explain it in a different way that you understand, then maybe go to your peers and ask your friends and other classmates if they can help you understand the topic. And if that doesn't help, there are plenty of online resources like this video and other channels where you can get information to help you understand a topic via video tutorials. And the beauty of those is that you can press pause whenever you need to and revise content, have a go at practice questions, and then go back and watch the explanations as many times as you need. As I said, and I keep saying it, but I'm going to continue to hammer that home. Don't pretend or wait until the revision week 
to try and get your head around topics that you find difficult. I hope that's helpful. Happy revising. Please like and subscribe to the channel so that you do get further content when it's released.